And so, um, and that's the whole thing, is to overpower. So he's totally disconnected to your emotions and your feelings. You can't hurt him. He's already hurting. He's already hurting. So how are you going to hurt somebody that's hurt? You can't. That's why they're hurting you. Because their vibration is so low. So there's nothing that you can really do for them. It's just hope that one day they find the error of their ways. And that truly has to come from them. That can't come from you, sweetheart. There's nothing that you can do about that. You can lead them to the water, but you can't make them drink. You understand? And when you become a, a, a major threat and you're, you begin to show a momentum of strength, then guess what? At that point in time, you become a threat. You become a threat. But that's when you got to go. Because if they're so wrapped up into you, you know their deepest secrets, you know everything about them, it could go all real bad for you. So your exit has to be strategic. You understand? Your exit has to be something that has been premeditated. Something that you've already thought about. You've looked at, okay, well, what if this and what if that and what if this and what if that. And anytime they tell you that they're done with you, that is a gift. Because you've allowed them to use and execute their power to say that they're done. Even though that is nothing but a manipulation tactic. Because they want to get into your head for you to beg them, Oh, please don't tell me you're done. Oh, please don't tell me you're leaving me. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. That's the Jocelyn and the Stevie J effect. They're never going to leave you. Why? Because you know all of their secrets. You know their weaknesses. They're not going to leave you, baby. They're not going to leave you. They're going to demean you, disrespect you, override and overshadow your boundaries. Why? Because they're vibrating so low and they don't know what they're doing. And they're so disconnected from their feelings, they don't know how to stop it. But they'll come in and out of it sometime because a lot of times this is laced with other things. Post-traumatic syndrome, bipolar disorder. Some type of sociopath psychosis. You know, it's all kinds of other things that this can be laced with. Paranoia, schizophrenia. A lot of things that don't have nothing to do with you. This is some childhood shit. This is some shit that's been happening a long motherfucking time. And a lot of times, children that, are, that have narcissistic parents, they riddle the same thing upon their children and their spouses as well. It is nothing more than a domino effect that you're on a treadmill. You don't know how to get off. But, and they don't realize the raft on their path of all these souls that they've just collected and all these people that they hurt. They don't realize it. They just, they don't change their stripes. They simply change where they feed. And if there's going to be any form of resistance, they will cut you off to get another victim to start the cycle all over again. It's not about you. It's about them. So before you get to a point where you've completely lost sight of who you are, find your exit. Ivana, Ivanka, whatever the hell your name is, find your exit. And her problem, she probably feels as though her only exit is for him to die. Because once he dies, then therefore... She doesn't have to deal with this demon, this devil. She knows who she's dancing with. Please understand that and know that. This lady is not dumb. And her hairstylists, her um, nannies, those are her deepest confidants. And I'm certain, you know, they got certain blinks and certain gestures and certain hand moves that they correspond with each other. And they know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she got somebody to talk to. You could believe that. You could believe that, you know. So I was just sitting up here and I just wanted to discuss this on this day because somebody truly needed this message. Somebody needed this on today. This is an epidemic that a lot of women are walking around here in silence. And it doesn't have to be a man of power. It could be a man of very minimal means. But it's just the fact that he's a, he was a little boy that was hurt. He never really knew what love really was. You know what I'm saying? And see, that breakdown comes from the mother-to-son relationship. If a mother-to-son relationship is already broken, 
How are you going to come in and fix all these wounds with him that are so deep with him? His vision of what a woman is supposed to be, his vision of what a woman's love and care and nurturing is supposed to be, is crippled. It's crippled. For a young man to have seen his mama go through so many different things, for him to have seen his mama probably on drugs or hooking and crooking or whatever, ladies, pay attention. Your mother-to-son relationships is going to pattern your son into manhood from boys to men. And you don't want them out here just spreading venom and having children all over the place. And he just picking up and just leaving and just leaving. It's the fight or flight mode because they're not going to stay there and fight through their issues and situations because it's going to show too much of a vulnerability in them. They're not ready to concede that way. So what do they do? They have children over here, by this lady, by this lady, relationships over here, different cities, different area codes. Because what they do, any form of resistance, they're just going to pick up and just move on to the next. And it isn't until they realize, you know what, I'm doing something wrong. I am doing, it's me. I'm doing something wrong. Some of them never realize that. Some of them will never, ever realize that. You're seeing this with this man, with this 45. You're seeing this shit. He ha he, he, uh, at his age, he still doesn't realize that it's me. He doesn't have any friends. He don't have anybody that he can trust. He has to pay his way through. And just like with these men that don't have those type of means. But guess what? They out here doing a whole bunch of shit. They're sleeping with a whole bunch of women. That's not something you'll ever be able to corral. You're not going to be able to change that in him, ladies. That's something that he has to change in him. Because, honestly, we're not supposed to just be sharing our bodies with any and everybody. But when you find a man or a woman that is so easy to do that, that's a pain you don't know nothing about. Their vibration is so low because that's not what we're supposed to do. Growing up as little girls, you know, we play house with a mama and a daddy and, you know, the children and all that kind of stuff. That's the way, you know, little girls was brought up to believe that you're going to get this knight and shining armor and this and this and this. And the little boys, if they were ever taught that you're supposed to be, you're supposed to, excuse me, provide protect and prepare a lot of these young men are not given those tools not or not even are they given the vision or the examples to see in the 80s it fucked up a lot of homes and a lot of foundations were fucked up in the 80s with that goddamn pcp angel dust ride the white horse cocaine crack it fucked up the foundations in a lot of homes because now the women had not, if they didn't get on drugs, if they got on drugs and they became strawberries and that's what they called them in Los Angeles and South Central LA, they became strawberries. They were turning tricks, you know, for the crack, for the next hit or whatever the case, you know. And then there were some that had no choice but to take care of their children and allow this man to go on his way because he's now on to drugs. And so he's just out there just doing just whatever, wilding the fuck out. It fucked up a lot of homes. And then what happened? The children that were born in the 80s were addicted to so much drugs. They had a problem with listening and understanding and comprehension in school. They were on Ritalin and all these different things. Back in the day, you just got your ass whooped. But in the 80s, these kids were subjected to different type of drugs that was in their system that they was born with. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a long line of pain that's going on in this motherfucker, you know? And women, a lot of them lost their way and they became very disrespectful to their children and to their home, allowing different men coming in and out, in and out. You can't let your son see that, ladies. You cannot allow your children to see the relationship that you're in. I come on here and I talk about my relationship to you guys because my hope is that somebody... Somebody is going to get the message and going to say, okay, well, I learned something. 
you know me and my daughter is very close but I don't every man that I meet first of all you don't have sex with every man that you meet and nor do you introduce your children to every man that you meet you don't do that you don't bring every man that you meet to your home you're worthy for him to take you out to dinner I understand a lot of them because a lot of them are vibrating so low Whereas they dealing with a lot of women that vibrate low. So a lot of women come to my house, come to my house, come to my house, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Let's sit on the couch. Let's bring some Bacardi and cup. Bring a $10 bag of weed. And she going to give you everything you need that night. Because those particular women are vibrating very low. They lost their way. When a lot of times a lot of women just want to be held. And the predators, the narcissists that's walking around this motherfucker, that's collecting souls, they prey upon the fact that you just want to be held. You just want some love. You want some recognition. You want somebody to say, you know what, baby, I got you. I love you. I see you. You're hurting. They will, you know, these predators out here are preying upon that weakness. And as you show that weakness, you're calling them into your lives. They gravitate to that. And when they gravitate to that, they work on your head and your mind, your body and your soul so tough, the whereas you lose everything, you lose who you are, and you begin to just feed into their ego. You feed into this power that they believe, this mask. You feed into it. And all they, they want to constantly be uh, put on pedestals. Constantly be boasted upon. Constantly to be praised and this and this and this. They want you to praise them, but they don't know how to really praise you. Every now and again, there's, oh, that look nice. Oh, that look nice. Oh, that look nice. But it's very disconnected. It's very, very disconnected. You're going to get your best compliments from people other than the one that you with. And that's so cold-blooded because it's the motherfucker that you lay with. But that's just the way that it is. Because you are his end of the day. He don't see you the way you think you being seen by him. You know what I'm saying? You're his safe haven, his doormat, his comforter. You know what I mean? And you can have your motherfucking comforter on your motherfucking bed for two or three months at a time without washing that motherfucker. But it's so goddamn warm. It's like, oh my God, it's smelling everything, but it's warm. You know what I mean? It's soothing. And that's the way that they see. They don't see you as, oh my God, you done went, you done worked on your body and all this. You got your little shape and shit going or, you know what I'm saying? Or you just got your hair done or whatever. They really, really, really don't see that. They don't. They see it in somebody else. They will see it in the next one though. <laughs> Go on their Facebook or whatever. You'd be surprised on what they really looking at. You would be, you'd be blowed the fuck back. And yet and still you at home working on everything you got going. He telling you, you need to do some sit-ups. You need to pull away from the table with your fat ass. That's because he's feeling so low. His vibration is so low. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't realize that you're hurting because he's disconnected to hurt. He's disconnected. So, ladies, I ask that you continue to take care of your sons. Strengthen your mother-to-son relationships. You must and you got to check them when they're going through their relationships with their girlfriends and stuff. Don't jump on their side. Oh, my son ain't going to never. My son ain't going to. My son, them the very ones that's doing it. They done seen you do some shit. They done seen you lying to, your, to their daddy and shit. They done seen you lying to motherfuckers out in the streets and shit. They done seen your integrity fucked up. So what do they see when they get out in the world as men? Oh, shit, women, they be lying. Women be running more game than a little bit. Hell, I done seen my mama run two or three motherfucking niggas. Hell, shit, I was getting Christmas gifts, nigga. When it came down to them George, I was getting all kind of shit, nigga. My mama had one dude that was doing this, doing this, doing this. When these men have seen their mamas doing that, their respect for women is very low. Ain't nothing you can do about that. You can be the best of motherfucker to them. But if their vision is fucked up, if because their beginning was unstable, man, he got to find his way. Just don't lose yours, though. Because at the end of the day, as you gravitating to this strength because you're so weak, don't lose sight of the fact that you have children, you have a mama, 
You got relatives. You got to go to work. You got to tend to the other shit in your life besides tending to this ego because he doesn't feel it and you can't fix him. He got to fix him. That is the way it goes. And if anything, pray for him. Pray for him. And you know you are dealing with a motherfucker with some, you know what I'm saying, some inadequacies mentally. When they steer away from prayer, they that's one thing about them. You get to talk about the Lord's Prayer. You get to talk about, baby, let's go to church. They Watch what happens. Watch what happens. They will go to appease your ass maybe once or twice, but the whole time, how long is this, how long we got to be here? You know what I mean? All day, all Sunday, every Sunday? Now nah, I could probably only go two Sundays out the month. I, 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 I will concede and say I'll go twice a month. And that whole time on that Sunday morning, oh my God, the devil working on his ass. Giving him all the reasons why he should not go to the house of the Lord on that month, on that morning. You know what you're dealing with, but you start, you're still trying to pray him through this. You're still trying to see him through this. God, I love him so much. I've given so much. I've sacrificed so much. I've given so much. This is the father of my children. I gave my virginity to him or whatever. He doesn't see it the way that you see it. He might never will. So sometimes you need to step inside of yourself and begin to strengthen those weaknesses so you no longer become prey. And if that means that you're going to be by yourself for a little while, because God didn't make us to be alone. Okay? He didn't make us to be alone. He made us to be a mate of another. Your life partner. And one thing about having a life partner, they don't walk away from you. They never tell you to go away. Because they're, they're, it's like a puzzle piece to where they're trying to intermingle and intertwine into your life. They're trying to find how do they fit. They're never going to tell you to get the fuck out of here or go away from me or leave me alone. They will never say that to you. Ever. Because that is your twin flame. That is your life partner. You know what I'm saying? Those are hard to find. But before God deemed you worthy of having that, you better get yourself together because he's not out here to bless no mess. So if you're not worthy of such a twin flame, then therefore you're going to be on a treadmill. You're going to go through this and that. A lot of this shit is going to become karmic. You're going to reap what you sow. You hear me? All that shit going to come around full circle. So you can walk around here and assume that you're getting away with a whole lot. You're not. God is just biding time just to see how far you going to go with the bullshit. Before he yank your ass back or sit you down, lay you down, or take you out. So, on that note, I got to go outside and tend to my plants. Last night, I fed them, and it's, it's been like 95. Yesterday, it, was, it had got up to 102 in my area. So, last night, I was outside feeding my plants, and this one right here, the sun began to fuck with him. So, and I'm trying to bring her back because it's the inside plant. And see, with the skylight, it's filtered light, so that's what she thrives on. But I had her outside. And I done that twice. And, and like, okay, I got to bring her in, got to bring her in. And then, like, right now, I got plants outside. Because I just brought her in now. See, it's still kind of, yeah, you know. So, anyway, let me tend to um, the living. I love you, family. I love you guys, and I love you guys for watching. Figure out who you are. Work on that. Work on getting your shit together. So whatever it is you're asking for, you're ready and you're worthy. On that note, I love you guys. You guys have an awesome day. Video day in May. Video number 23. I'm gone. I love you guys. Mwah. Bye.